It's a very, very special day for not only New Mexico State, but for all of college basketball. Is earlier this afternoon in Kansas City, the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame announced its class of 2015. And we are so proud that in that group of eight, our own coach Lou Henson has been selected for induction into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame. Coach, this has been a long time honor, and it is my privilege now to introduce one of the eight men who have been selected for induction this November into the National Basket Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame, Lou Henson. First of all, thank each and every one for coming out today. Uh, uh, it's a special day for all of us, uh, and uh, I've, uh, I never anticipated this happen, happening, really, but uh, it did, so we're grateful about that. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm really, I just can't believe that happened, because I wasn't even on the ballot for a long, long time, <laughs> so it really surprised me that, uh, that, I, that I made it, but... Uh, it's nice to be here with you, and it's nice to have you here. And I, I've got a lot of, I only see a couple that are not friends here. That's great. <laughs> That's a good percentage. But anyway, I'm deeply humbled to be included in the two, 2015 Hall of Fame class of the National Association of Basketball Coaches. You know, I started my basketball career 70-some years ago. Back in grade school, we didn't have a team, but we, we got a sock ball and a rim up on the old barn, and we practiced basketball all the time. We'd practice our passing and shooting. Now, nationally, we couldn't dribble the ball, but we got that passing and shooting in. And that's how everything started at that time. And, uh, and of course, uh, I never could have imagined that the game of basketball would bring me to this point in life. I've been truly blessed in many, many ways. Uh, been blessed with parents who instill good life values in their eight children. I've been blessed by having a loyal wife who's been super through the years, and my children are here. I, I, I got Fred and Lori here, and Chris and Lance in Brooklyn. They're here, so it's ha it's nice to have them here. Um, and all of you know Mary. All of you know Mary well. Let, let me. You know, I don't know for sure, but I'm quite confident that she was on the debate team in high school <laughs> and when she go to, went to college. Over 60 years, we have several arguments. I've never won one. <laughs> See, she's pretty good at that, I know. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> no. But anyway, at this level, you know, I've had great teachers, uh, mentors, and coaches. I was blessed to have to have been hired by boards of administration uh, and uh, all along the people with outstanding ability. And I've been fortunate to be surrounded with outstanding coaches, great assistant coaches. And uh, these coaches, I couldn't have made it without these coaches. And they deserve more credit than I do. I've been blessed with uh, outstanding graduate assistants, trainers, managers, medical personnel, uh, and and all of the people that I've come in contact with, and they've been quite a boost for me. I, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to all of those individuals who have backed me through the years, and that, that means all, all of you in this room and a lot of other people. Talented student athletes form the core of any successful team. These men are truly responsible for my standing here today. I can't think of those young men, I can't thank them enough for their hard work, dedication, loyalty to teammates and me. Mary and I consider them part of our extended family. I would be remiss if I didn't thank our loyal fans, student bodies, 
other support groups, including the bands, cheerleaders, dance teams, community booster clubs, faculty members, staff, and, uh, and all of the, which gave us amazing support. I will accept this prestigious honor not only for myself and my family, but on behalf of my players, coaches, and many friends who, who have contributed greatly to my success. Congratulations to, uh, I want to congratulate the other members of the 2015 the NABC Hall of Fame. There's some good ones in there, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Finally, I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to the NABC Selection Committee who saw fit to select this native OK Oklahoma son to this illustrious group of outstanding coaches. Now we'll open up for any questions that you have. Questions? <laughs> well, I'll tell you one, without same players and superior coaching, it's going to happen. That, that will not be a problem. Yeah. I don't know whether I want you to or not. I, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, I've known Bill, I've known Bill for 50 years, and I'm not so sure I want it. <laughs> Harry, come yeah, on up, yeah, please. please. So the president would be here, except that he's up in, uh, up in Santa Fe groveling for money. Uh, but he wrote a note to the coach this morning. And, Coach, I'm going to hand this to you, but I'm going to read it first. And it says, Coach, congratulations. Well-deserved for one of the finest coaches and finest people ever associated with NMSU. If you can get back into coaching... I am here to assist you. Or if you <laughs> I know you will continue to guide me in the operation of NMSU. My best to you, Mary, and your family on this great occasion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, I've known Dr. Crothers for about 50 years, and uh, most of my experiences with him have been good, not all of them. <laughs> Anyway, what questions do you have that you'd like to ask? Jack Nixon, I know he has a lot of questions. He used to always give me the tough ones. <laughs> Over here, Coach. Well, that would be hard to pick that out, but I do want to talk about the most exciting team that I coached while I was here. It wasn't one of the best teams. When I came here in 1966, we'd lost, we were 17 and we were 22 losses and four wins. We hadn't beaten UTEP in New Mexico in probably, I don't know, several, several years. So we had two 6'2 forwards, we had two little guards, and a 6'5 postman. We were supposed to be one of the worst teams in the country. Well, that team, on the first game we had, we had was against Oklahoma City University. They were a top 10 team. There's another top 10 team there, and that was Creighton. And Oklahoma State was just an average team. Well, anyway, the Oklahoma City coach and the Oklahoma State coach had a big falling out because each one wanted to play lowly New Mexico State. <laughs> well, and, the, and they never got over it, I don't think. Well, anyway, Abe Lemons, at being in Oklahoma City, said, look, it's here. I'm playing New Mexico State. Well, Creighton, a ranked team at Oklahoma State, not a very good team. That was the first game. Creighton beat them with ease. Now we're going up against a top-10 team in the second game. And at halftime, we're only down 12. Now, by the way, we, back then, we didn't have a radio with us. We didn't have anything. Back then, you should have seen the situation we were in. Well, anyway, on down 12, I felt pretty good about that. Well, anyway, we had a quick team, and they were small. So we finally got a two-point lead. We spread the floor, and we had an excellent spread offense. We wound up winning by 22 points over a ranked team. <laughs> now, it came over the TV stations in El Paso. They mentioned to 22. They thought, that's not bad to get beat 22. <laughs> Nobody dreamed that we'd won that game. But I'm, this team was the most exciting team I've ever coached. They weren't supposed to do anything. And then we were going down to play UTEP. They'd won the national title the year before. 
They had everybody back but one guard. Big Daddy Latin, 6'9 or 10, Cager, 6'7, and uh, uh, just loaded with talent. And so Mary and I were going down. I said, you know, if we don't beat more, get beat more than 25 points, I'll feel pretty happy about it. Well, <laughs> here we are with all these big guys. We happen to get a lead. We spread the floor. Now, if we had to go head to head, they could name the score on us. We spread the floor. We had them down 18 points with three to go. These are the national champs and beat them 13 points. And everybody in there thought it was a flute game. Well, I did too. Everybody else did. <laughs> well, they came to our place in the first half. They had two field goals. We went on to beat UTEP after the national championship team. Went on to beat them 10 straight times. So we do, by, by the way, Haskins is a great coach and a Hall of Fame and all that. But after we won five or six games, he would leave before the game was over. He'd just get up and walk out. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad you – that team – was a team that always, they call them the Miracle Midges. That's what they were. Any other questions? Well, of course, you know, it meant a lot to me and because I never thought it would happen because there are a lot of coaches out there, 350 major schools and a lot of coaches and that deserve to be in there. So we feel very fortunate to have made it. Okay, Al McGuire was a coach, all time Hall of Fame coach, and they came in and they were ranked third in the country. And the NIT told us if we beat Marquette, they will invite us to the NIT. So we had a tremendous game, and we upset Marquette. Well, they didn't come through. We didn't get invited. But that was one of the, that was one of the great games, to beat a ranked team. And we weren't that good, but a pretty good ball club that year. But that was a super game. <laughs> now, you know, I know somebody would bring that up. <laughs> Let's put it differently. I was impeached in three games. <laughs> The first one, we were playing North Texas State here, and uh, we were ahead, but we were, we were down about eight or nine points, and I didn't like the officiating, so I got kicked out. Well, anyway, our team was inspired. They came on and won that game. And so the coach, he said, I'll never, I never want to play you when you get kicked out of the game. He had the game won. My second game, it was 1975 uh, in the Missouri Valley with Memphis State and Louisville, all those great ball clubs. And we were picked last in the league. Well, if we beat St. Louis or Bradley, either one, we will go to the NCAA. That would put a second end to Louisville and Memphis. There are a lot of great ball clubs in the league at that time. Well, we went into St. Louis, and things weren't going very well. Every call seemed to be going against us. And I kept trying to help the officials. It didn't do any good. <laughs> With about three minutes to go, uh, I was impeached. Policeman walked me out. And by the way, let me, let me tell you a little bit. Coach, you'll appreciate this. Now, you take several guys on a trip. See, we had no money, hardly. We had 10 players. I only had one assistant in his recruiting. I left here with, uh, with a trainer, George Westbrook. We on this, so we, we go into playing St. Louis. And with about three minutes to go, I had to leave the floor. And uh, so I told George, I said, George, would you take over the team? <laughs> so uh, when, the later in the night, I was talking to one of the players. I said, how did Mr. Westbrook do when I left the court? How did he do? He didn't coach us. He started picking up the warm-ups. <laughs> <laughs> That's not all of that story. So we lose that one. We go to Bradley. Bradley really had a good ball club, and we really need to win it. Well, it started. They jumped off the big lead, and the refereeing was kind of bad, and I was kind of out on the floor. George got me, but the way said, Coach, please come back. Please come back. <laughs> he didn't want to coach anymore. <laughs> well, we had a great game, won that. And went to the NCAA, played the best team in the country, North Carolina. Played them even for a half, and they beat us in that game. But anyway, that was – so, let's say I, maybe I was kicked out of another, and I'm trying to forget that. <laughs> At least – oh, oh, yes, I remember it. No. I, <laughs> well – well, who wouldn't get kicked out in Albuquerque? <laughs> you should get kicked out. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you, 
And I guess that's kicked out of four and not three because I remember Michigan State. We were playing, playing Michigan State one Saturday afternoon, and again, the fish is kind of bad. Well, my postman and their postman ran, just bumped together. Well, he wasn't even a foul. Well, he calls a foul on my guy, and I start complaining. And then I look down, and they had, instead of the postman shooting a free throw, the number one free throw shooter on the team, the captain, was shooting the free throw. I tried to get their attention. They had the wrong man up there. Well, while I was trying to get their attention, they kicked me out of the ball game. <laughs> so, uh, I, so I've been ejected a few times, but and I probably deserved it each time. <laughs> Well, first of all, I, I, I had a tremendous high school coach. One, he, coach he, was, he was a great coach. And uh, then Presley Askew is my coach here at New Mexico State. He's one of the outstanding coaches that I have seen and a great guy. You people who know Coach, he's the type of guy, and I saw him a lot. I saw him. I never was with him that when I left, I didn't have a better feeling about myself. He made everybody feel good. So he was a great coach. And so... I learned a lot from him, just a lot of things about life and about basketball. So I give Coach Askew a lot of credit. Well, we, of course, we all want them to be good citizens, and we want them to get an education, and we stress that. And a lot of our guys got degrees, and uh, so just through all the years of coaching, you're trying to make them better people and better citizens, and that was our goal. Any other questions? Hey, we haven't had tough questions yet, so that's good. <laughs> Coach Henson, we do have uh, – one statement that uh, Coach Marvin Menzies would like to get up and give to you, and congratulations. Coach Menzies. Thank you very much. Yeah. Coach, you can, you can take a selfie right here. Okay. I think that might be my first official oh, selfie, actually. But yeah. I figured I'd better make it a special one, you know? Well, uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that uh, – you know, Coach Henson has been a, a great friend to, to myself and my family. Uh, I would hear all the great stories about Coach throughout the years, working with Patsy Torres. Patsy would always, you know, they'd always go to lunch all the time. And, and God, he must have been a great boss. They still getting together and hanging out. And she would just tell me all, you know, about his character. We'd always speak about how, how great, not just of the basketball piece. We all know, you know, the 700-plus wins and actually 900-plus when you count all of his different stops. But uh, so – just a quick story. Uh, coach was a, coach has done a fantastic job sitting next to me on the bench here. We're undefeated in all the Lou Henson classics, by the way. So, but so coach always comes in and speaks to the players every year. And this past year, I didn't tell you this, coach, by the way. But after he uh, had left the locker room, one of the guys said, um, uh, "Coach, how, how many wins does Coach Henson have anyway?" And uh, I said the number, and I said, "Well." One of the guys, I think it was Ian, I don't remember, he came up to me after, he goes, hey, coach, you got a coach, you're like 90 to catch him. <laughs> I said, bro, I ain't catching Lou Henson. <laughs> you can put that one out of the books. So, uh, but no, you know, on, on a serious note, uh, you know, Mary and, and, uh, and Lou are just impeccable people. And it's always, you know, you hear about legends, legends, legends. But, I mean, how often do you have a chance to interact and conversate and get advice and, and uh, you know, have mentorship from a, from a living legend? I mean, it's been a fantastic – I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this honor that this man has just received. And he's so humble. I mean, you listen to him, well, you know, he, he – I mean, I've learned from his humility. It's, it's, it's an amazing walking, living, talking example for myself of how – to run a program, and, and I think about the stories that Patsy shared, and, and I've heard so many from Sherry as well, and it's just, a, it's just a, an honor to, to, to follow in his footsteps in this profession. So I just want to say thank you from, from our current team, our past teams here, 
and, and the whole program and athletic department just thanking you for being you. Coach, thank you. Wouldn't you like to talk some more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to hear more from you. But let me tell you a story. I was, I was at uh, Hardin Simmons, and uh, Coach Woodson called, and I met him in El Paso, and he offered me the job. Well, I came up, the coach who was here the year at McGregor, uh, they went to New Mexico and lost for about 20 or 25 points. He left the team. He didn't come back. And it was a bad team. We'd played them twice the year, last year, th that year, and beat them badly. And uh, uh, so, so I got the job. I came back. I walked in Williams Gym. And by the way, in Williams Gym, before we upset Oklahoma City, we're going to play there. 1,800 concrete bleachers. Yeah, just. But after we upset the the tenth best team in the country, we moved the games to Las Cruces High, which is seat about 5,000. But anyway, so I came back and I went into the locker room. Uh, the window was open. Jockey straps, everything is all over the place. It was a mess. <laughs> the wind had been blowing. The sand was about that thick. And I called Mary and I said, hey, we made the decision. I need to go back to Hardin Simmons. <laughs> and I really felt that way. I just felt it's almost an impossible job, and so that was my first day on the job, but it got better. <laughs> we want to say thank you so much for Coach Henson, his 779 wins that he has, which is currently still 11th. He's one of only 12 men to take two teams to the Final Four, and uh, the Aggies, of course, in 1970, and then Later in 1989, he took the University of Illinois. Just to let you know what kind of class this is that he is going into, the other two coaches who are a part of this class, Don Donaher of the University of Dayton and Caesar Zip Gales of Langston University, who is a true pioneer at Langston U. The players going in in this class, and you may have heard of a few of these gentlemen, Rolando Blackman of Kansas State, Quinn Buckner of Indiana, John Havlicek of Ohio State, Ed Ratliff of Long Beach State, and Charlie Scott of North Carolina. That is the class for the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame that will be inducted on November 20th in Kansas City and the enshrinement at the uh, College Basketball Experience in Kansas City, Missouri. Coach? We appreciate you so very much. We think so much of you. There'll be some time for some one-on-ones uh, for various members of the media. And, uh, of course, Coach Henson will, would like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for your attendance for this afternoon's news conference. Thank you.